Welcome to Sam's Business Growth Show. I'm Sam Dunning, a digital marketing, sales, and business growth evangelist. Tune in and subscribe today as I'll be interviewing business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. You'll be learning their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your own business. Welcome back to a fresh episode of Sam's Business Growth Show. Excited today to be joined by Rick Denley. Rick is self-proclaimed transformational growth coach. He's got 25 years in leading multinational organizations. His background's in transforming sales growth strategies, execution, and team building. He's worked with small to large organizations, including creating winning sales processes, focused on consultative and relationship based sales approach. He's also a number one bestseller for the book Reinvent Yourself that was published back in April. Rick, a very warm welcome, sir. How are you doing? Excellent, Sam. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Looking forward to it, man. So Excellent. the focus for today is going to be how we can create a winning repeatable sales process, yeah. which should be pretty valuable, to be fair, for anyone um, anyone in business, anyone in sales, anyone that's that wants to drive a bit more revenue and have a repeatable process that they can keep firing Absolutely. up day after day. Absolutely. Yeah. But before we get to that, Rick, please tell us a quick snapshot on your good self for anyone that does not know Rick Denley. What are you about? What business are you into? Where are you from? Well, I appreciate your introduction. That shared a lot, Sam, to start with. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the corporate world leading sales forces and marketing groups for multinational organizations. Then about three, four years ago, decided to move out of that venue on my own, looking to work with more people to help them be their very best, to grow their organizations, especially small to medium-sized organizations and entrepreneurs. Uh, bringing to them a little bit of the, the the corporate knowledge and best practices from around the world without all the bureaucracy and red tape. So that's what I've been doing recently. And, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Get out on my own, reinvent myself, make changes with organizations as well. And also, you know, giving me a bit of time to free up and work as a philanthropist, as well as you know, from some of the things that you see here, I do some amateur boxing as well to help fight and bring awareness to cancer. So that's a little bit about what I've been doing right now. But my passion lies in making sure that people and organizations punch through their growth ceilings and be the best they can be. Love that, man. Love that. Love that bit of boxing and great yeah. to hear you doing stuff for a good cause, man. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Good on you. So. Yeah. Rick, I think the first topic we're going to chat about was um, obviously everyone knows times times are a bit tougher now. Things yeah. some business is pretty bleak for for many organisations. Yeah. Um, so I think you you're going to share some stuff with us about how businesses can pivot properly, how they can transform things when when with what, everything that's going on right now. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sam. You know, as leaders, as consultants, advisors, we really need to collaborate right now with each other. That's huge. Stop the competition between each other and collaborate like you and I are doing here today. You know, it, the nearly instantaneous economic recession triggered by this pandemic has really wreaked havoc on small and large organizations as a whole. Nobody's immune to this one. And everybody talks about the fact that, okay, we have to pivot our business. And, and you know, what does that mean to pivot it? Pivoting is really a lateral move, okay, that creates enough value to your customers for your organization to share to them. Uh, there's a couple keys to pivoting, and I just want to share those with you now that I've been speaking to my group on my masterminds, my monthly masterminds for organizations. Three main things when we look at pivoting, okay? Must align your firm with one or more of the long-term trends that you've created or intensified by the pandemic. You have to be aware of it, all right? We have to use that term. We have to know that we have to lead with empathy now. That's very, very important for us. Second thing, it must be a lateral move, as I mentioned earlier. It must be an extension of your firm's existing capabilities, cementing, not undermining your strategic intent. Okay, that's important. Don't go change everything that you do. You're still bringing value. You just have to change how you do it. Thirdly, must offer a sustainable path to profitability one that preserves and enhances your brand value in the mind of your clients. So those three things are very key so that your business can continue to perform. So when people talk about pivots, keep those three main things in mind. Got it. And Rick, in your opinion, everyone has their own idea of what actually bringing value to the table is. 
Could you perhaps give us some tangible examples? I know it's, it's quite tricky without nailing down a certain business, but maybe you could talk about for your own business or some of your clients' businesses of way yeah. that they're bringing value to either their existing customers or prospective mm -hmm. clients that they're trying mm -hmm. to bring on as, as um, customers right. um, and ways that they're standing out and ways that they're actually presenting what we call value. Yeah, that's very good. And it's trickier to do now, as you mentioned, Sam, because everything's virtual and we have to very... We have to understand very well how to approach things virtually. I'm going to get into the sales process piece in a minute. But, um, you know, when you look at that bringing clients value, we have to remember that really clients are only looking for a few things. They're looking to save time, money, or to solve an issue. And you have to determine what that is fairly quickly for them. And the interesting part, and I want people to realize, is that, and I've asked my organizations that I work with to do this, go back and revisit your clients and ask those key questions right now because everything has changed for everybody. We can't assume that the same thing we did six, seven months ago for our clients is where they're at now. The issues that we're helping them solve, the solutions that we create are not the same as they were back then. So don't assume that they are. Go through that questioning again and really show intent to understand your clients. Then and only then can you see how you can bring them value. And it's at that point that the value will come out. Got it. So we're talking about more thorough, deep questioning and go really back, understanding. What go back to square one. I don't care if you've done business with these companies for 30 years. Everything has changed now. There's not any organization or person on the planet that hasn't been impacted in the last six months. So let's revisit that and make sure that we're servicing our clients correctly. Got it. Got it. No, that, that makes sense. And I think that's one of the worst things we can do, Rick, in business, always assuming that yeah. we think we know what the situation is or we, we assume that we know where a client wants to get to from A or B. Or, for example, when I've, I've had this in the past where I've been referred business, so it might be a client that was really happy with the job. They passed us on a, a web project or a digital marketing project, and I just yeah. assumed the client wanted to maybe generate more leads from their website or something like that, and it turns out they wanted to do something completely different. So that's, <laughs> like you say, sometimes you, you skip steps because you assume when really you should just take it from, from scratch. Ask, or ask all the questions you need to know. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Very get, get the right objective. Cool, man. Um, Okay, so let's let's move this forward. I mean, let's get to, to some of the juicy parts of this conversation. How can people, I think you've got some actionable tips you can share with us on how people, how businesses can generate more revenue um, from, from today. I do, and then I'll parlay that into that sales process piece that we did. Let's just some quick hits that I share with organizations. Uh, and we, we touched on the first one here. You, you know, find a fresh perspective. Find something a little bit different. People do not want the same old right now because nothing's the same right? Everything has changed. So you and your organization and its offerings need to change as well. If your organization, big or small, has not aligned its sales and marketing teams yet, you need to, all right? Because these things need to be together from the front end of your marketing, digital marketing, whatever type of marketing that you're doing to your sales force has to be a seamless integration from the time that you get leads and prospects right on through to the closing. So make sure you align those. Third item I want to talk about is get creative with new business solutions. You need to bring something new. Even myself on my end, I needed to pivot, move my business laterally and move everything online on my coaching that I used to do in person. That had to change for me. I had to put my entire offering online and make it accessible to all of my clients. So that was a move that I had to do. And in doing so, I actually created some new solutions for them as well based on the times. One of my largest um, sellers right now that I do on a monthly basis is my virtual selling course, which of course is done virtually, but I had to create that and it's done online. So that was a new creative offering for my clientele, my existing clientele, and it attracted new business as well. Revisit old leads. Those leads that you thought that you'd never do business with that organization, there were reasons for it. Remember, everything's changed now and their organization has changed as well. Revisit those now with your new creative offerings. And then finally, don't turn your back on your existing clients. Remember the 80-20 rule that 80% of our business is coming from 20% of our clients. Focus on those 20% per percent and make sure that you're selling as deep and wide and bringing them as much value as you can with all your product offerings. That's very important as well. So those are five quick hits for us, Sam. 
I like it. So let's let's jump into a couple of those, Rick. Um, I like the the revisiting old leads. As like you yeah. say, sometimes we can get caught up, um, which will bring us on to your final point. But yeah, sometimes we can forget about the old leads. We can give them a few calls, give them a few emails, try to reach yeah. out to them on LinkedIn or wherever they're online mm-hmm. in terms of social. And then perhaps we haven't reached them after a couple of weeks. We've yeah. put them on the back burner and we've completely forgotten about them. So a few months down the line, we don't know what they've, they've done. They might have gone with another vendor or they might still have the same problem they originally approached us with right. and they needed attacked. So have you got any examples of good ways to, to reach out to, to leads that have perhaps gone quiet or we've forgotten about, or got lost in our CRM and yeah. uh, how we can spark up a fire and, and get them chatting again? Yeah, definitely you want something to be new and exciting for them. And that would be the approach that I'd take. I said, geez, I remember when we spoke the last time, you mentioned about wanting this out of the other thing, and maybe we didn't have the right fit. We have two or three new offerings, and one of these, I believe, would be appropriate for you. And that's the type of approach you want to take, something new. I'm not coming back at you like I did six, seven months ago. We've reinvented ourselves. We have new offerings. And from what I spoke on the last time and listened to what you said, I think this one's going to be the right fit for you. Could I have 15 minutes of your time to discuss that? And that's, you want that call to action as well. Bring them on board somehow. But I would say, have something shiny, have something new that might fit what you heard them saying before. Got that. Got it. Bring them a fresh, fresh idea. I like fresh it. Idea. Okay. You bet. Nice. Okay. Good. And in terms of um, existing clients, yes. again, similar thing. Sometimes I'm sure myself, I've been guilty of it many times. New inquiries are coming in. Perhaps there's projects we need to deliver to deadlines. And yes. we perhaps aren't as attentive to our existing customers as we maybe should be. Mm-hmm. Um, when, like you say, it's, it's far more expensive to acquire new customers than it is to obviously look after existing, as we all know. Right. So what are some ways, Rick, that we can make sure we're servicing our existing clients as best as we can be? And right. we're also getting as much, um, without squeezing them too hard, but getting a good bang for our buck, obviously keeping yeah. them on board, keeping them retained, and also getting revenue out of our existing customers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too common, too easy to forget that our existing clients do have choices and they could go elsewhere. And as you said, seven to eight times the energy and expense to get a new client, then keep an existing one. So make sure you keep your, you know, finger on the pulse. One thing that's not too old school to do now, and you can do it digitally, of course, is create a little survey for your existing clients. A a five question survey that you fire over to the key decision makers and make sure that you're on track. And if you're not, those red flags will come up and then you can address them. And that's fairly important as well. The other thing that you can do is just ask very good open-ended questions to them that will generate a discussion and let you know if you're missing the mark, including, geez, you know, what has changed in your organization that maybe we need to respond to? Is there anything we can be doing differently? And that that can be in a survey form. It can be in a phone call form, however you want to do it. But get out, reach out, and hit those touch points and go back to square one in asking those probing qualifying questions, which you should have nailed down in what I want to talk about now, that repeatable winning sales process. Definitely. No, I love that point, Rick, just just asking what's going on right now. Yeah. Where do you want to get to? What kind of challenges have you got? And really personalizing it and right. ensuring that you actually care about what's important. To, Back to, to your point, Sam, don't assume that you know what it is. It's not the same as it was six months ago, I guarantee you. Awesome, dude. All right, let's Good. let's jump into the the process because that's going to yeah. be really useful on um, on how we can actually yeah drive sales, generate revenue, and do yeah. it consistently. More importantly, yeah. One of, one of the main things that I like organizations to do, whether they're small or large. Here's an interesting fact for you: Why is it that over ninety percent of franchises are successful, and over half of entrepreneur startups fail within three years? Process. Repeatable winning process. That's the difference. So in sales enablement program that I like to come in and put in place in organizations, we talk about the importance of this winning process and you have to have it. You have to have clear objectives, tasks, and gates to get past as you go from prospecting right through to closing. And it's very unique to your organization and your industry. And this is what we need to build for you. You want a repeatable winning sales process for many reasons. Number one, you want consistent performance to all your clients. You want to give the right tools. And this is a tool for your sales group, your sales people, your sales and marketing organization. You want to be sure everybody has the same tools, right? Imagine if we were to give uh, some individuals a task of starting a fire. 
And I gave some individuals some rocks and some sticks to rub together. And then I gave other people a flamethrower. Who's going to be better at it, right? Obviously, the person with the better tools. Make sure all your sales team has the same tools. And that includes a winning repeatable sales process. And within that, make sure that they have qualification questions that we just spoke about that they have the negotiation skills and the closing skills necessary to be successful. That type of professional approach will be appreciated by your clientele as well. So putting in place and creating your unique winning repeatable sales process is one of the most important things you can do now and into the future. Completely agree. Um, and if we could, Rick, if we could break that down a bit more, um, the tools is a great, great point. Making sure well, everyone on your team's got both the same, is armed with the same questions, whether yeah. that's an initial discovery call, whether that's a demo or a presentation, and whether mm -hmm. that's actually uh, generating the business and ongoing. Right. And then, like you say, the software. So whether it's software to chat, whether it's Zoom or Skype or whatever you use to actually generate meetings or whether it's the yeah. creating the proposals, the demos, the, the quotations, whether it's anything else that helps them in their prospecting, their account management and so on. So that's a really valid point. Um, yeah. And in terms of the, is there an actual process you follow to break it down into a bit more of a, a binary, a, yeah, broken down kind of breadcrumb approach? Um, yeah. Have you got a process that you follow, i.e. is it uh, initial prospecting call, discovery call? quote stage, follow-up stage, and that kind of stuff? Or is yours a bit different to the traditional methods that we see out there? Well, you know, it's interesting you ask that. And I kid people, especially when I'm on stage and speaking, when I get the opportunity to, or virtually as well. And I start off with the fact that little known fact about me might be that I'm a recovering engineer. So my okay. first degree out of school was actually engineering. So I've got a little bit of that analytical side to me. But it is something that we break down into each of the sales stages. Now, the interesting part is that it is very moldable to the organization and whatever CRM they're using, because that's a key tool in any sales organization and sales process. And we dovetail that together extremely well. So we put those things together and those are just some of the tools that we'll have in each of the sales stages, prospecting, qualifying, solution building, negotiating and closing. There are the right tools and tasks that we require in the sales process. And we build those based on the individual's knowledge and capabilities, the industry specifics that there might be, and what the organizational goals are. So that's how we come in and do that. Now, how we do that is interesting as well. We do it through assessments of the sales organization, right down to the individual level. The salespeople will take an online assessment to help us understand where their strengths and areas of development are. And then we go into looking after and training in those areas as well. So we're improving the individual skill sets as well as the overall umbrella of sales process within the organization. Those two things combined raise the level of professionalism. And as I said, too, your win ratios and other key performance indicators will improve in your organization. The off, there's a couple of offshoots of this, Sam, that are pretty cool too. Uh, the, the other one is that when you have things like this in place, you become an employer that people wanna come work for because you have what they need to make them successful. So then you're attracting and retaining top talent in the industry. And that's difficult to do nowadays as well because people are always on the move. So that's a nice offshoot of having the right tools in place within your organization. Awesome. No, I appreciate your thoughts on there, Rick. Um, yeah, thank you. Moving this forward, in terms of on this show, we always like to take an approach um, from a digital marketing standpoint. Yeah. And are there any recommendations that you've got, Rick, from a digital outlook that can help people generate more business, that can help them win more clients, any that have particularly helped your organization, be it digital, be it website-based, be it um, social-based, or any particular mm -hmm. golden nuggets or tips of advice that you've got for anyone that we might not have thought about? that could be really useful right now? Yeah, I don't know how original it is, but I found it increasingly effective with my clients is the use of LinkedIn Navigator as a digital platform. It really allows you to get more information on the clients that you wanna work with and gain more connections and networking and see how any of your processes are working, whether it be a digital emailing campaign you might be utilizing or any type of research that you need on organizations to be successful, the LinkedIn Navigator to me is a very worthwhile tool. And you know what? Upskilling is so important right now. 
during these times. If salespeople or organizations, Sam, think that they're going to do what they did six, seven months ago, or are waiting for the pandemic to move off so we can get back to normal, there is no normal. This is the normal. So start looking at those other digital tools that you talk about with your clients and organizations as well, including that sales navigator. I find that to be a very effective tool, but there's going to be some upskilling and learning there as well. Sure thing. Are there any um, resources that you recommend when it comes to building sales processes and things like that, Rick, um, whether it's your own, whether it's others that you've read or, or seen or video courses that people can plug in and tune into? You know, it's um, it becomes fairly complex type of arrangement to put together a winning repeatable sales process. So you might want to get some help with doing that. We're not experts in all those different areas. That's something that I've obtained. You know, it's interesting. Sales enablement is actually a term that came out in the 70s by Xerox. And they figured out a way to make sure that their salespeople all had the incredible tools that they need. Now, yeah, back then it was in a binder form like I had up until, you know, six, seven months ago as well. And now everything's digital and done differently. But something like this as a tool is essential, but it takes time to build and put together. And that might be the time to outsource something like that and get it done correct for your organization. Rick. Awesome, man. Really appreciate it. We've covered some great ground. And um, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thanks, Everyone, Sam. You, no worries, dude. Appreciate you coming on. You've been listening to Sam's Business Growth Show, where we sit down with business leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We find out their story, how digital marketing has helped them along the way, and their exclusive tips and insights to help you skyrocket your sales and skyrocket your business. Rick, if you could thank just one person, either dead or alive, having a positive influence on yourself and your career, who would that be and why? That's a very good question. Um, I think I'd have to go back to somebody uh, named Doug Smith. He was my first leader and manager in the corporate world. And he really encouraged me to uh, be myself as a leader. And that's a really good tip for anybody out there as well in leadership. Make sure that you're yourself. As much as we take uh, leadership direction from many different individuals and we become a mosaic of the experiences that we've had in life to make us who we are, make sure that you remain true to yourself, your cause, and bring that passion in your leadership and you'll have people that are want to be working with you and around your circle uh, ongoing, you know, and, and we got introduced by a great gentleman as well, Simon Ayer. So shout out to Simon, um, you know, who's an incredible sales trainer and knowledgeable networker as well. So encircle yourself with those good people to be successful. Nice bit of advice, Rick. Please do tell us more about how everyone can learn from you, how people can connect with you, um, any businesses you'd like to plug and the best way to get in touch with your good stuff. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Look, if you do want to learn more about that Reinvent Yourself that I've talked about, there's my book. It's available on Amazon. You can also pick it up on my website along with other information about the services that I provide, a newsletter, see some of my podcasts. This great one will be up there too. And that's at www.rickdenley.com. Awesome, Rick. Really appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Sam, for your time and your audience. It's great to be here. And to everybody, be well, be safe. Cheers, dude. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to search Sam's Business Growth Show on wherever the heck you get your podcast, be it Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever, for tons of interviews with business leaders each and every week to help you boost your sales and make best spend of digital marketing. Thanks for tuning in. Are you tired of constantly hunting for new customers? You could be missing out on regular inbound opportunities, all because your website isn't on the first page of Google. Perhaps you're already spending lots of money on advertising, but your website is failing to convert all of your hard-earned visitors into a consistent flow of new customers. If you'd like to learn more about our unusual approach that brings idle clients straight to you, connect with Sam Dunning on LinkedIn or book a free 20-minute consultation via webchoiceuk.com. That's webchoiceuk.com. Subscribe today for more digital marketing, sales and business growth tips from the experts.